isn't America a white man's country? Yes, it is a white man's country because he conquered the Indian, exterminated him, and took possession of his property. I say the KKK is the invisible government of the United States. What do you mean? Uh, the Klan represents the spiritual feeling and even the physical attitude of every white man in this land. Do you realize that such statements could get you lynched? Uh, we have five million substantial oak trees between Africa and the West Indies. We are ready for lynching party tonight if they wanted to. La Recently, there have been several rapings of black women by whites. Was that discussed? Yes, it was. He claims that they are as much against that as any self-respecting Negro should be. But I know better. In my opinion, they are structured for the purpose of offending, suppressing, and killing Negroes. I would advise every Negro and those who aspire to leadership to form an organization similar to that of the Ku Klux Klan so that they may be able to look out for their own interests and not continue to be begging white people to do for them what they ought to be doing for themselves. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, so it's me Skin Glow and Afro again. I'm here to do the video on Marcus Garvey because I've been saying I wanted to do this video for months and months and months and I ain't got around to it yet but I am here to do it today black history study so if you want to check it out then I shall be sure to link it down below as per usual because you know I'm nice like that so here we go Marcus Masai Garvey Jr was born on the 17th of August 1887 in St Anne's Bay, Jamaica. His parents were Malchus Messiah Garvey Sr., a stonemason, and Sarah Jane Richards, a domestic worker. The Garveys had 11 children, nine of whom died in early childhood. Only Marcus Garvey and his eldest sister, Indiana, lived to, ad to adulthood. Ugh. Can't get my words out as per usual. A quick little fact, he was also referred to as the Black Moses because of his work to liberate black people. You know, he wanted to create, I believe, um, a United States of Africa where all the countries in that continent worked as one. But as you can see, it didn't really work out like oh, that. Marcus's first wife was... Amy Ashwood Garvey. They were married from 1897 to 1969. They married in New York in 1919 but divorced in 1922. Amy Ashwood was a very active pan-Africanist social worker and activist for women's rights. Marcus's second wife was Amy Jacques Garvey. They were married from 1895 to 1973. They married in New York in 1922 after his divorce. She was his, pers she was his personal secretary. Amy Jack Hughes played key organi organisational roles in the UNIA and was instrumental in teaching people about Marcus Garvey after he died. She and Garvey had two sons, Marcus Garvey Jr. and Julius Winston Garvey. Garvey came to England in 1912. Marcus Garvey worked at the offices of the African Times and Orient Review Journal under the leadership of Deuce Muhammad Ali, the famous black nationalist and journalist. The African Times and Orient Review was the first political journal produced by and for black people ever published in Britain. It was produced during 1912 to 1913 and 1917 to 1918 on a monthly basis and was printed in Fleet Street in London. Marcus Garvey returned to Jamaica from England in July 1914 with the help of an associate called Enos J. Solai and about four others he created a Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League and launched it on first on the 1st of August 1914, which is Emancipation Day in British-ruled Caribbean. The first UNI division was formed in New York in, New York in May 1917. Within a month, the organisation had 2 million members all over the United States. By 1920, the UNIA had... 1,100 chapters in 14 countries across the world, such as UK, Cuba, Panama, Costa Rica and Ghana. By 1926, the membership of the UNIA had grown to over 11 million members. Marcus Garvey built the largest, the largest black organisation in history. In 1918, nine years after the failure of the first newspaper, The Watchman, Garvey and his 
Gavi and the UNIA created a new goal world. It quickly grew, grew from being a weekly into a worldwide phenomenon with a peak circuli circulation of 200,000. It features reports from the UNIA chapter Poetry, Literary Experts, excerpt, sorry, A Woman's Page and commentary on global events significant to black people. It had sections in Spanish and French. Colonial authorities freed the Negro world and it was banned in many countries such as Belize, Trinidad, Guyana, Jamaica and several African countries. Garvey and other black activists were partly inspired by the Irish movement for independence from English rule and thus named the UNIA headquarters Liberty Hall after Liberty Hall in Dublin, Ireland, which was the symbolic seat of the Irish Revolution. It was located at 114 West 138th Street in New York City. The New York City Liberty Hall had a seating capacity of 6,000. It was dedicated on July 27, 1919. Garvey held nightly meetings at Liberty Hall that drew up to 6,000 people at a time. For the entire month of August 1920, Marcus Garvey UNIA ACL organization held its first international convention in New York City. Most events were held at the New York Liberty Hall. Its biggest event were held at New York City's world famous Madison Square Garden. An estimated 25,000 black people attended a the convention from all around the world. Delegations from 25 African countries were in attendance as well. Marcus Garvey launched the UNIA's first major commercial venture, the Black Star Line Steamship Corporation in New York in 1919. The goals of the corporation were to establish an efficient mode of transportation, communication and trade among black people worldwide and to enhance the stature, self-image and pride of these communities. The public invested in the, in the corporation by purchasing stock shares at $5 each. The corporation purchased its first ship, the SS Yarmouth, in September 1919. It was later unofficially renamed the SS Frederick Douglass after the African-American abolitionist. The Yarmouth proceeded to sail for three years between the US and the West Indies as the first Black Star Line ship with an all-black crew and a black captain. In 1920, Garvey established the Negro Factories Corporation and offered stock for African Americans to buy. He raised $1 million for the project. He wanted to produce everything that a nation needed so that African Americans could completely rely on their own efforts. It generated income and provided jobs by, by numerous enterprises including a chain of grocery stores and restaurants, steam laundry, tailor shop, dressmaking shop, millinery store, clothing, fashion, hats, accessories, etc. Publishing house and adult In factory. New York City alone, Garvey owned several buildings, owned a fleet of trucks and had over 1,000 black people working in his businesses. Marcus Garvey's UNIA also operated the Phyllis Wheatley Hotel, 3 to 13 West 136th Street, New York. Garvey's ultimate dream was for the independence of all African countries and the creation of the United, United States of Africa. The UNIA emba embarked on a plan to reparate some blacks from the United States and other parts of the African diaspora back to Africa. Libya, a country established in 1822 by the American Colonialization Society, was the intended geographical base of the UNIA's African colonization venture. Yeah. Enemies including J. Edgar Hoover and ironically W. E. Dubas. Dubas was an integrationist who did not support a separate black state and reparation. Dubas was also opposed to Garvey's association with the Ku Klux Klan. His criticism his criticism of mulatto leadership and his belief in black racial purity. Dubas, along with the other NA NAACP members organized, organized the Garvey Must Go campaign and collude with the US government to have him deported. The FBI established a special counterintelligence program called COINTELPRO to neutralize political dissidents. Between the years 1956 and 1971, the FBI, the FBI used the COINTELPRO program to investigate radical national political political groups for intelligence that would lead to involvement of foreign enemies with these groups. According to FBI documents, one of the purposes of the COINTELPRO program was to expose 
disrupt, misdirect, discredit or otherwise neutralise the activities of the black nationalists. They wanted to prevent the rise of a black messiah. In 1919, Hoover hired the FBI's first black agent in order to infiltrate the UNIA. The agent, James Wom Wormley Jones, was referred to as Code Number 800. One of Garvey's close confidants, Herbert Boulin, was a spy for the FBI, known as Agent P-138. When his steamship company went bankrupt, Garvey was convicted of mail fraud by using the United States mail to fraudulently collect money for investment in a ship that was never acquired. He went to jail for two years. His sentence was commuted by President Coolidge before Garvey was deported to Jamaica. Garvey arrived in Kingston, Jamaica on, ten, on the 10th of December 1927. During this period, Garvey became a father when Amy Jacques Garvey gave birth to two sons. In 1928, Garvey created a People's Political Party or the PPP, which was Jamaica's first modern political party and the first to defend the interests of the black majority. The party's manifesto called for official representation in the British Parliament, a minimum wage, land reform, a Jamaican university, judicial reform, a government-run electrical system, public high schools and libraries and a national opera house. In an effort to rebuild the international influence of the UNIA, Marcus Garvey moved to London in March 1935. In London, Garvey continued to speak extensively, appearing frequently at Speaker's Corner Hyde he had Park. A stroke in January 1914, which left him partially paralysed. In May 1940, George Padmore wrote an article stating that Garvey had died, which upset Garvey, and he up he suffered a second fatal stroke or heart attack. In June 1914, in London, at age 53, without having, without ever having set foot in Jamaica. In Africa, sorry. Marcus Garvey has inspired every black major movement of the 20th century, both in Africa and the Americas. Followers of Garvey's I ideology include Han, Kulan, Elijah Muhammad, Minister Louis Farrakhan, Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. Also leaders of African independent states such as Presidents Nayandami, Azikwi, Kwame Nkrumah, Joma, Kenyatta, Nelson Mandela, Patrice Lumumba, and Julius and Julius Nuria. I'm sorry, I butchered those names, but I really cannot pronounce them. But yes, that is the end of my Marcus Garvey YouTube video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. And I'm sorry that I butchered some of the words, but my dyslexia has been playing up this week, so I'm sorry. Stay tuned for the next video.